nice big surprise. They're slowly but surely heading this way. Let's just go forward because they're on their way straight to the road. And I wonder if they're going to head towards Biffles Hook Dam, which will be quite nice. I'm quite excited about this, actually, because I've been looking for these guys the last few days and haven't had very much luck. So I'm super happy that they're about to come out onto the road in front of me in perfect timing. And it looks like a monstrous grouping of them at this stage. I can see quite a number of our very, very special large grey friends. So there are lots of elephants that are about to just emerge out of this bush. Where they've come from, I'm not quite sure, but there is a whole big grouping of them, at least 30 that I can see already coming through this bush. It's just a whole bunch of big grey ghosts. There come some of the little ones. <laughs> Look at them front there, so they're busy chasing each other. So there they come, the two naughty ones in the front leading the charge. There we go, running around like crazy. Lots and lots are about to cross the road. Let's see how many we can count here. What are you chasing? There's some elephant that is upset with something. I feel like a bird is getting the wrath of these ellies. Oh, there come some little ones. So when I said it was not a small herd, I meant it. There are lots of elephants here. That's just the first wave. And we're about to get the second grouping coming over now. There comes the next grouping. I don't know if anybody's counting them as they're going over. It's difficult with all those legs and little babies in amongst the middle of them. Trunks wagging all over the show. They seem to be in a jovial mood this morning, these elephants. They're all quite busy. Paula, you were hoping there were going to be babies. Well, Paula, there are most certainly a lot of babies. There's quite a number of them, and I'm hoping the direction that they're heading could potentially take them to Bifflesook Dam. It's, a, it's Maybe they've got to just turn slightly, but we'll follow them along in case they do head that way, because it'll be such a joy to watch all of them around the dam and having a drink and... This is really what I was hoping for, is to find a nice big herd of elephants and spend a really long period of time with them. So I'm super happy about this. And you can see here comes the next wave coming over. This is the last grouping, and there's a young bull that will be the one that will bring up the tail end of the herd. But that is not a small group of elephants at all. Heather, you're wondering if this is an unusually big herd. Heather, no, not really. And this is par for the course at this time of the year we often do get larger herds of this side in the of this size should i say in the winter months um so it's not unusual um, unusual for us would be a herd of 70 to 100 that's an unusual size herd that's when you, you kind of takes your breath away and here i'm sure there's only about 30 i would say maybe 30 to 40 of them um that are in this herd so not too big the average kruger herds that you see are generally between 15 and 30, that's kind of an average size for the elephants that we see in this area. So not too big, um, but nice to see nonetheless. Uh, to see uh, as many as we've seen now is very pleasant. I'm certainly not going to sneeze at it, as they say. The problem is, is where they head dense and very thick. It's not going to be an easy place to, to follow the herd. We will try, obviously, to keep up with them as much as possible. But something's obviously just caught their attention because all of a sudden everybody stopped feeding. And look at how the ears are out slightly and trunks were kind of sniffing. So I wonder if they didn't pick up audio for another elephant somewhere and they were just having a little conversation in that low frequency sound because it was amazing. Everybody was feeding and all of them stopped at the same time just to kind of listen. And now they're going back to feeding again. So I'm going to go forward a bit so you don't have to deal with all of these branches. Frank from Michigan. Hello, Frank. You want to know if the herds are going to always stay together? No. So the herds actually do move around quite a bit, Frank. Um, you'll find a situation where they, um, depending on environmental conditions, so how much food is available, how much water is available, that will sometimes um, kind of separate them or bring them together depending on what the situation is. So they will try and stay together as much as possible and, and as the herd grows though it gets too big and then you'll find there'll be splinter units of females and their families going off 
and forming a new herd and then they will come back together at times and break apart so it's a bit transient in that regard but there will be times where you'll have um, herds staying together for quite some time and what you will find with them is that there's a female when she has her offspring they will always be together so it doesn't matter how big the herd gets her direct young uh, younger females that she's had will stay with her and form part of the herd with her now I don't know what all the rush and the fuss was about because everybody's starting to settle down so majority rules you say 33 for this herd that crossed the road and we've got to factor in our two bull elephants that haven't crossed yet that are coming slowly but surely this way and that will make 35 then which is a quite a nice size herd so there's one of the bulls the other one is behind us at the moment so they're not very big bulls these are youngsters teenagers that are still in amongst the group you'll find that they slowly but surely going to be pushed and maybe because they were kind of walking behind the rest of the herd got a little bit um, sort of antsy about it and moved off quite quickly that could be why we have a situation where they were moving quite fast and now that the bulls are on the other side of the road everybody's just settling down a little bit such a joy though to listen to them feeding all around you can see a crunching of roots and breaking of branches leaves being shoved into mouths Kaylee, you're asking if it's true that elephants mourn the dead. Well, they certainly will be quite upset when one of the members dies. You'll find that they'll sit around there and they'll try everything they can to get that member to stand up, to move again. They'll stand there and they'll sniff it. But in terms of mourning after that, there seems to be some sort of... I don't know if mourning is the right word, but they they seem to be able to to process that there's some sort of death, and they and they definitely their behaviour changes. So I suppose we could classify it as mourning. But I, we had a dead elephant on Chitwa once, and it was fascinating to watch that process. And every single elephant herd that came across that carcass in the sort of six seven months until I left Chitwa, that the carcass was there, even when it was bones. Every single herd once they got close to it everybody would stop feeding there would be a silence there would be no more rumbling or anything like that and they'd all get into single file and they would come past that carcass and every single one would touch and smell even when it was rotting and there was still meat on it and then once it got to bones they would all sniff and take their turn and kind of walk past it and then slowly move off so whether that's a paying of respects in some way or a curiosity i'm not sure but in terms of mourning if a female loses her, her one of her young ones then most certainly they do go into a bit of a sort of state of depression if you want to call it and when i worked in kenya with those orphans we found that they um, would be in a state of mourning as well when they, if they lost their mother so often they would be very sort of down about things there would be no life in that elephant whatsoever as it kind of came to grips with the fact that it had lost its family and its mom and all kinds of other things and you'd find that they'd be really in their shells and it would take quite some time for them to start actually coming out and start to show a bit of character so I would say yes they do mourn whether it's the same way that we mourn obviously that's a bit different but they certainly do have a process where they are not themselves after a death and they will then investigate carcasses and and sit and smell and kind of look around and 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 have some sort of communication around that <laughs> 